107.9 CDY, this is Cadillac Unscripted. It's another half hour of Saturday morning chat with folks who are making a difference in our community. Katie Huckle, my co-host, is here with me. Hi, Katie. Hello. Good morning. Uh, It's nice to see you, and it's nice to have on the phone with us Major R.C. Duskin from the Cadillac Salvation Army. Good morning, Major. How are you? Good morning. Doing well, thank you. Oh, my goodness. You have so much on your docket. Um, Can you tell us a little bit about how things are going with, with the Salvation Army and Cadillac? Well, uh, things are going uh, pretty well, uh, considering everything that is uh, going on and everything that's happening. Uh, With Project Christmas uh, canceling this year, we have uh, a lot more that we are are doing as a part of our Christmas assistance. And so we are moving forward in uh, packing uh, food boxes and figuring out uh, how to get uh, the food boxes and toys uh, and gifts to uh, families across uh, Wexford, Misaki, and uh, even Kalkaska County. Um, you know, with that, it's uh, just figuring out uh, the best way to do it with uh, COVID and uh, everything else. So we're uh, working to do some deliveries. Uh, we are working to uh, have some folks pick up, but uh, it's all kind of a, a drive-through situation uh, to limit contact. And um, besides that, we have bell ringers out and just trying to do what we can and raising the funds that we need for uh, everything that we're doing, uh, even beyond uh, just this Christmas season. R.C., for our listeners that don't know, uh, Project Christmas was canceled, and the organization, the event folks, came to the Salvation Army, and and you took over. And the logistics behind this, I mean, Project Christmas helps hundreds and hundreds of families that are struggling with their with their Christmas dinner, with hats and mittens and coats and gifts and appliances, and it really was a Christmas shopping one one stop shopping for families which we can't have now and it's just mm-hmm. remarkable um rc that the salvation army was able to step up and and take over can you tell us about the logistics involved in this well uh a lot is uh what we are accustomed to doing okay uh, we do it on a little smaller scale but as a part of our application process we go through a wish list uh, with the families with children and just figuring out uh, some of the things that they like. And so uh, when we have the the angel tags uh, that are out in businesses around town, uh, it allows uh, folks an opportunity to get items that the kids have asked for. Uh, we do have some generic ones out there to, to give folks an opportunity to uh, choose uh, some different items that are generally accepted for certain age groups. Uh, but there are some that uh, will be out that will have uh, more specific information uh, from uh, actual wish lists for children uh, that we have. Uh, but uh, matching up uh, these gifts, matching up uh, these families with uh, the donations that are coming through, whether it's even through the Toys for Tots boxes, uh, it is a, a big task, and uh, we've already uh, started that process of sorting through uh, some of the toys that we've already received, uh, working with Project Christmas, and uh, they are uh, continuing to help us uh, through this and being able to provide some support and manpower to be able to make it happen, but also uh, some in-kind uh, gifts as well, uh, whether it's... Uh, some food items, uh, or even some toys uh, to help us in, in meeting this uh, monumental need uh, that we are experiencing this year. Sounds like incredible collaboration is coming together here. Can you give us an idea of about how many families have applied? Well, as a part of uh, our process, we uh, took what... Uh, the folks that had already signed up with Project Christmas. So uh, we started with that group, and and many of those that had uh, signed up with Project Christmas and were not receiving toys uh, was a much easier uh, situation for us. And so we have not reached out to them 
uh, in particular at this time because we're looking to be able to still provide them the food and a delivery situation just like Project Christmas was going to do. I see. Uh, but for all the children, we had to call all of those families. And uh, from my recollection, there were over 300 families that we uh, needed to contact between Wexford and Misaki counties uh, that had already uh, applied with Project Christmas, and we've had uh, a few others. I think we are close to 500 families total. Incredible. Uh, at this point. It's incredible, RC. That's It's an incredible outreach. And you don't have a large office, so you, you've got a lot of people doing a lot of work. A few people doing a lot of work. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do have a, a few people, um, but uh, we also have uh, a, a number of volunteers uh, that come uh, alongside us uh, during this time of year and uh, as I said before, the Project Christmas folks are are involved, and we have a number of people that have stepped up to be able to uh, help us and in, in meeting those needs. Uh, we have also uh, made people aware uh, of uh, adopt a family opportunities, where uh, we will provide uh, a wish list from uh, all of the children in one family. And uh, a family or an organization or a group uh, could go and uh, purchase uh, gifts and possibly even food uh, for that family so that uh, we can put our focus on other families and other uh Uh, individuals that have come to us for assistance. I am reading stories about families who have decided to forego gift giving to each other and take that money that they would have spent on gifts to each other and give to an organization like yours. Wow. Um, If if somebody wanted to do that, who would they contact and how would that uh, they get the ball rolling on that? Uh, the easiest thing to do would go to um, our website at sacadillac.org and uh, go to the menu, and and there's uh, an, e- an opportunity to send an email to us uh, through that portal. And uh, we will get that email. We'll work through our process and get an idea as to what, folks are interested in what type of family they're interested in uh, adopting and uh, we'll get them uh, their list of uh, of the gifts that the children might uh, that would like and uh, also maybe even a, a household or a family gift that might help them uh, through this time and so it, it's just uh, an easier way to get the ball rolling is that we have been uh, inundated with calls and those that are trying to apply and as we've been trying to reach out to those that had a, applied to uh, Project Christmas. Uh, we are still expecting to get some calls uh, this coming week, yeah, but we are uh, uh, limited in what we are to able to do because uh, we have to have so much lead time to be able to get some of the items uh, that we need uh, to provide by uh, the week of Christmas. It is, it is interesting. I think this year people have kind of lost track of time with the changes that we've had in our lives. And it's, uh, you know, you look at the calendar and it's December 5th and Christmas is 20 days away. Incredible. It doesn't even seem possible. It doesn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, you mentioned the angel tree. Can you uh, expand a little bit on that and maybe uh, where folks can find that and uh, how that works? Well, uh, there's uh, a few different places around town uh, that have uh, Christmas trees that we put uh, paper angels on. And uh, it'll have a list of uh, items uh, based on uh, the gender and uh, age of a child. And it will have their their wish list on it, and uh, they can take it off of the tree and go and purchase those items and then uh, get it back to us. And uh, whether someone would want to do it through uh, the Toys for Tots drop boxes uh, or uh, bringing it to our office, uh, either way would work. Uh, one uh, other thing that we have this year in 
uh, cooperation with uh, Walmart is we have uh, an online angel tree through their registry for good. And so it allows people to, to go online and make their purchases, and it'll be uh, mailed right to us. So folks uh, who are concerned about COVID and don't want to get out and go shopping, uh, they can go online and search for the registry for good for the Salvation Army and Cadillac, and they can go through uh, some of the items that we've requested and uh, make their purchase, and they don't have to leave the computer. Excellent. That's great that you threw out that option. I bet you're going to have a lot of folks take advantage of that. What did you do when, when, when your organization decided, okay, we're going to take this Herculean effort on? How did you staff up with your volunteers, Sergeant? Did you, did you start making phone calls or send out an email saying oh, we need to you know, load up with volunteers? Or what did that look like? Well, we have had uh, a number of volunteers that come and help us as a part of uh, the Christmas season uh, in particular. Okay. And we've just said, uh, this is where we're going, and uh, let us know what your availability is. Uh, but even as a part of the, the different things that we went through uh, last Christmas, uh, we had a number of uh, partners uh, that stepped up and helped us, and uh, we're able to call on them again. And uh, our our partnership with Project Christmas uh, over the last number of years uh, is strong and continues to be strong, and so uh, we have their support, even though uh, they had to cancel their event. They're still very much involved in uh, what we're doing and uh, able to uh, make things happen so that families are not left out in the cold during this uh, Christmas season. Um, amazing work. One of the uh, most significant sounds of the season to me is the Salvation Army bell. Absolutely. And <laughs> RC, uh, we're going to take a break and then we're going to come back and we're going to discuss the the, uh, the Salvation Army bell ringers and maybe how you, how our, our listeners can, can assist in that. Uh, but first... We're going to take a break, and we'll come back with the second half of Cadillac Unscripted, sponsored by Independent Bank and Remax Central Marianne Quist on 107.9 CDY. Buying a home is still the great American dream, and yes, it can be an intimidating process, but you can rest assured and have confidence when the professionals from Remax Central are in your corner to guide you through it. Marianne Quist of Remax Central has helped hundreds of home buyers in and around the Cadillac area navigate the process over the years, and she's ready to help you too. From start to finish, from finding a home to submitting an offer to understanding the purchase agreement to inspections, surveys, and appraisals to the time when you finally sit down and sign those closing documents, Marianne will be there. When you're ready to buy, talk to Marianne Quist at Remax Central. See her listings at teamquist.com. Back to Cadillac Unscripted on 107.9 CDY. Big thank you to our sponsors, Marianne Quist of Remax Central and Independent Bank. We're with R.C. Duskin, Major from uh, Cadillac's Salvation Army here in uh, in our wonderful town, doing wonderful work again this year. And um, we we left off talking about the the Salvation Army bells, the yeah. bell ringers. The Red Kettle Campaign. The the folks who are at the front of local uh, stores and ringing that bell, and that's, to me, one of the signature sounds of the season. It is. And um, I know that is a volunteer effort as well. I know a lot of people make it a tradition sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, year to year. So um, how do folks become part of that campaign, R.C.? The easiest way is to go to registertoring.com, okay. and uh, you search uh, for uh, Pick Cadillac in the drop-down menu, and uh, we have a number of uh, store locations here in the Cadillac area. Uh, we also uh, are out in Lake City in Falmouth at uh, Rogers and Ebel's uh, out there uh, as well. And we're, we're always looking for uh, volunteers to fill those slots. As uh, most of our coverage for uh, the bell ringers is through volunteers. Uh, we have been very fortunate to have uh, so many step up. And uh, this year we uh, did not get a uh, 
uh, volunteer from uh, out of the country, as we have in years past, to be able to help us in this effort. And so uh, really trying to get the word out and uh, fill up those time slots. Uh, But if uh, someone is not computer savvy, they can call our office at 231-775-7131 to uh, figure out a, a place where we have some openings. I really enjoy it when uh, I see friends of mine who post to their social media uh, and they post pictures of themselves and they're at the front entrance of whatever store it happens to be. And they say, hey, I'm here for the next two hours. Stop by and see me. Oh, that's awesome. Or family. Mm -hmm. People who have their kids out helping ring the bell. Um, I think that that's an important part of the holiday season is just recognizing that there's need out there and and what we should be doing to serve others. Um, A really good Red Kettle campaign season looks like what in terms of dollars raised, R.C.? Well, uh, we are hoping uh, to get uh, over $50,000 this year in in the Kettle campaign. Um, It is uh, a bit of a push uh, versus uh, previous years for us as we have done a lot more uh, with uh, volunteers, but uh, as we have more volunteers, uh, it means it's uh, less that we have to pay out uh, right. to uh, some paid bell ringers that we have. Uh, but it really is uh, a big part of what we do. But uh, with that, uh, we know that there's other ways that, that people are willing to uh, donate. And whether it's uh, through our direct mail campaign or people uh, just sending us checks, uh, there's all of those means. And even this year, as a part of the kettles, we do have some uh, electronic options as we have QR codes and uh, NFC uh, bump uh, items on uh, each of the stand signs uh, so that people can make a donation through Google Pay, Apple Pay, or even through credit card through the website that will come up. Uh, through either of those. You're pretty high tech, RC. I like it. (laughs) There's (laughs) no excuse. I can't take credit for it because it's been a national push. And last year we pushed it out uh, and uh, didn't see much of a response. But with everything that's going on this year, uh, we'll have to see uh, what what it'll do. Um, But I know that it's been uh, a pretty big uh, situation uh, throughout the country. Well, there's no the excuse not to give to now. Able to have this available, right? There's no excuse for folks not to give because they can go, they can get online at Walmart, they can get online at your website, they can go to the kettle itself and scan and do it that way. Um, or, I mean, the way I'm looking at the math on this is if everybody bumped up what they typically put in the kettle by a little bit, knowing that maybe there's going to be less ringing, then maybe that would help, meaning the average donation bumped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that would uh, definitely help in in making that push. And even with some of the stuff going on with the the coin shortage that people are saying, we, uh, I believe, uh, from what I have seen from the kettle so far, there are a number of more bills that we are seeing that are coming through. So uh, we are very thankful for the generosity of the community and being able to uh, put all of that forward and making things uh, work for us to be able to raise the funds. But uh, at this point, we're still uh, pretty far out from that, but uh, we still have 20 days uh, before Christmas. So, uh, lots more opportunities. I know one of the slogans for the Salvation Army that was used previously was need knows no season. Uh, and that causes me in my mind to go back about eight and a half months. We've been in the middle of the pandemic now for eight and a half months. And actually, uh, yeah, eight and a half months, cl- closing in on nine. So when COVID-19 became a thing back in the middle of March, how did you have to adjust your service to the community? Well, we had closed our office to the public. And so we were not doing any walk-in service. Uh, but we were still available by uh, phone, uh, email, uh, and even facts uh, to be able to to help people uh, with what they were needing. Uh, fortunately, there were some uh, moratoriums set, so we didn't need to do as much with 
uh, some of the utilities uh, or even the the rent uh, that people were needing. Uh, but as those uh, have lifted, uh, we've uh, seen a bit more need, a number of more people coming through. Uh, so we haven't uh, ever shut down the office, so we've been available. Uh, our food pantry has been a, a drive-up pantry, so we're doing our applications uh, over the phone. And if we are needing to do an interview, uh, doing it that way, or uh, uh, as we, as someone is sitting in their vehicle and we come up uh, to the window and, and have a conversation, but uh, they are able to come uh, through the back of our building and we'll have the food box and we'll put it in the vehicle for them so that we can avoid some of the, the contact uh, so that any uh, issues it might be alleviated through uh, the potential for interaction, uh, physical interaction with people. RC, it's interesting as you talk about rent and utilities and ringing bells, and of course everybody knows about your store. Um, you meet every need, it feels like, feeding people, clothing people, heating their homes, paying their rent. Um, can you tell us about the philosophy of the Salvation Army? You're, you're not operating in one lane. You're in so many different categories of human need. Uh, we are. Um, and uh, it's a three-legged stool is what uh, one of our generals, one of our international leaders has said, is that um, meeting human need is the thing that uh, we are most seen for and maybe most known for. Uh, but we're looking to, to save souls uh, for Jesus and meeting human need and uh, discipling and uh, helping people in seeing uh, what they can do and uh, allowing God to, to work through them as uh, we are first and foremost a church. Uh, the reason why we do what we do right, is because we love Jesus. And uh, without that, uh, we would just be another social service organization. And uh, we feel that we have uh, a much more of an incentive to be able to, to meet those needs because there is something more behind it. And we know mm-hmm. that not everyone is open to, uh, to hearing and uh, to seeing uh, some of that aspect of what we do, uh, but it doesn't negate the need that they have. Right. And so we're, we're going to show God's love uh, to the people around us and the people that come to us, uh, no matter what their station is in life, whatever their faith is or lack of faith, um, because we want to show God's love uh, through it all. Wow. Doing amazing work in the community. Un- uh, unbelievable. Question, R.C. Yeah. Your biggest need today today, looking at all these moving parts, you know, you need ringers and you need volunteers. And what, what's the biggest need? Uh, to be able to uh, continue on. Uh, as uh, funds are being expended, we're needing to replenish uh, everything so that we're ready for when uh, the next thing happens. Uh Right now, even though we are in a good place financially, uh, we know that at some point the funds are going to go out okay. uh, because we're we're helping people, and we're going to do that in in so many ways. And to be able to be in a stable place financially is, is so important because we don't know uh, what the future holds, uh, but we do know... Uh, that need will always be there, uh, no matter what is going to happen. So to be able to have the funds available uh, to meet that need, whatever it ends up being, uh, rent, utilities, uh, clothing, uh, gifts, food, uh, it's it's all important um, because many of those things are, are very basic uh, for for living. Right. Uh, for so many, but yet there are many that are hurting in being able to get those uh, needs met. And so we want to be available for any of those that, that need it. Okay. So cash donations would be nice. Yes. Okay. So I think right now would be a great time 
to talk about how people can reach out to you. You've mentioned it before, you know, social media, the website, even the good old fashioned telephone. Uh, Somebody needs the Salvation Army services. Somebody wants to offer some volunteer time to the Salvation Army uh, this year. How is the best way to do it? Uh, The best way is to uh, give us a call uh, at our office, 231-775-7131, or if they wanted to go to uh, our website, again, sacadillac.org, and uh, go to the Contact Us section. uh, There's uh, a drop-down menu that gives a a few different options of uh, what you're wanting to to either offer or uh, request. Uh, but we also are on, on Facebook as well, and uh, we do check up on that uh, every so often uh, because we know that in the world that we're living in, so much is uh, more digital these days. It sure is. What about a P.O. box for cash donations or checks? Yes. Uh, our P.O. box is uh, 447, and that would be Cadillac, Michigan, 49601. Okay. All right. Well, R.C., thank you to you and your volunteers and your office for all the work you do, not just in the Christmas season, but uh, 365 days a year. That's right, and 500 families at Christmas. That is really something. So congratulations in advance on all the help that you provided to the community, and um, we just thank you so much for your time with us today. Thank you for joining us, R.C. Yep, thank you for the opportunity. We have more local chat coming up next week, 8.30 on Saturday mornings. It's Cadillac Unscripted, which is sponsored by Independent Bank and Remax Central. Marianne Quist. We'll see you next week. Same time, same station, 1079 CDY.